If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, o Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises, declare unto mankind, Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly and righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him in the words of the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Please join me in reading Psalm 51, which is printed on your bulletin insert. We will recite verses 1 through 13 in unison. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be cleaned indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, 
though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write on it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in our canticle this morning, a song of praise. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praised and exalted above all forever. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what would, should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I have come for this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you, Lord Christ. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. What a great line. Indeed, they wish to see Jesus. Indeed, who wouldn't wish to see Jesus? I dare see even the most ardent atheist, if one would say, you have a guaranteed opportunity to see Jesus, would they really say no? The question really becomes, what do we see when we see Jesus? Do we see the baby Jesus? Do we see the Jesus in the Jordan being baptized? Do we see the Jesus strolling the countryside with people in tow, performing miracles, speaking of parables? 
giving lessons of love? Do we see Jesus pinned to the cross, pain and agony, suffering death? Do we see Jesus in resurrection and new life? Indeed, I would suggest to you that maybe one of the most important questions of all is, do we see Jesus in one another? That's really, really the critical question in our day-to-day -day life. Because we, short of some kind of tremendous miracle, we have no way to physically see Jesus, the Jesus that was 2,000 years ago. But we do have the ability to see Jesus in one another. This is why this is such a critical statement that he makes at the end of today's gospel message, that when I am lifted up, I draw all people to myself. I really ask you to focus on that. Take your insert and read it several times today. When I am lifted up, I draw all persons to myself. You see, that's the hardest part of this assignment of seeing Jesus in other persons. It's, it's really difficult to see Jesus in someone that you vehemently disagree with. Certainly someone that you consider an enemy. And yet Jesus himself tells us how important it is that we love, even in those circumstances. He affirms that here, that when he is taken up from this death that he must endure, as he says, even the, the grain of wheat, it must die before it can come and be flourished into new life. He's going to have to do this. But when he does, and when that is complete, and he has overcome death, which is the shackle for us all in this life, and he defeats it, it is indeed for everyone. Everyone has the ability then to see Jesus. In our day-to-day -day life, the question is, do they see Jesus in how we operate in our lives as Jesus operative in the world today? There's many ways to answer that question, but it's a super important one. Because if salvation is for everyone, then that means that mission and ministry is for everyone as well. Sir, I wish to see Jesus. Well, then I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning and I'm gonna think just exactly how am I going to do that? How am I going to help another to see Jesus in what I bring to the table, in what you bring to the table? You see, we go through this doubtful period and we hear a little echo of that in Jesus today. It's a very interesting little shift between these two movements of the gospel. The, the first part of the gospel sounds quite sure and certain. When they say, we want to see Jesus, he says, time to be glorified. I'm going to have to do this. There is going to have to be a death, and it's not going to be pretty. That's his response. It's sure-footed. It's certain. And then all of a sudden, there's this little gap in there. And then he says, Father, I mean, he's kind of saying, do I really have to do this? And this is not the last time that he will. But then he comes back in with a certainty because God speaks. I have glorified you. I have glorified your name and I will glorify it again. That's such an important statement because we can find ourselves bereft for long periods of time. In the case of coronavirus in 2020, going into 2021, that time has now exceeded one year. One year, as of this past week on the 15th, marked the last time that we were gathered together in this building without it being through a camera and a producer. We've been blessed for this past year to have the camera and the producer, because 20 years ago, we might have a whole different thing. That was a blessing. But you see, the blessing came among a real true death. We experienced real certain mourning over not being able to gather in this church. We've spent that year working as hard as we can to continue to find ways to see Jesus because we come in here every day with that same statement as the Greeks said, sir, we wish to see Jesus. It's not a one-time thing. It's not like going to the circus and saying, oh, I, I saw that act, that was wonderful. It's daily. 
It's like washing our hands. Lord knows we've been told to wash them quite often in this last year, like raw. But we have to have that same fervent desire to see Jesus in one another and in our own acts. And when we do fail, that we hear that voice from above saying, it's okay, I have glorified and I will do it again. Doesn't mean we don't suffer. We have suffered death because of the coronavirus. We've suffered grave illness of people that we love because of the coronavirus. We have suffered the seclusion, the inability to gather. We have suffered, many of our people have suffered in ways that we really might not have even predicted, ways of, of increased depression, possible thoughts of suicide, drug addiction, alcoholism, domestic violence, hunger, fear, oppression, increases in things like human trafficking. These are all forms of death. Something died in order for that to happen. But as God says, I glorified your name before, I will do it again and again and again for all eternity. It's the most beautiful promise of all. And we have been gifted with a, just a little bit of a glimmer of that just this week. You may have heard as we've been talking with a number of you and, and that we have been trying to work on a plan for Easter. Now we came up with a plan for Christmas and we had to ask that same question, sir, I wanna see Jesus, but we can't do it in this building. So what do we do? Now we came up with some interesting and creative things, including a donkey because that is the way that we were able to see Jesus that day for the baby Jesus for Christmas to commemorate that incarnate love come in the world. I loved it. It was fun, but it was sacred. It was including everyone. It was an example that when Jesus is lifting up that he draws all persons to himself because it was out there for anyone to see. But things have moved on. We've had things like vaccinations coming about better treatment, better understanding about how things like distancing help us. And now we're at a different juncture. We're gonna be going into Holy Week come next Sunday for Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday will still be online like this, followed by drive up communion. We're gonna have a nice opportunity for you after the communion version of this next Sunday for you to drive up afterward from 12 to one, receive communion, have a palm and participate in the passion of Jesus. We're gonna have some virtual things during the week as well. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. But then the resurrection, the resurrection we're gonna have live here. Finally, after a year, after finding 365 plus days in a row of finding every way that we can see Jesus possible, sir, we want to see Jesus, that we're gonna go back, at least partially, to the way that we've done it before. Still gonna have this Zoom opportunity for people that wanna to continue to stay home. But we have been given permission from the diocese in great collaboration, I'm very thankful by the way, for the Way Forward Task Force, for the Standing Committee of the Diocese, for our peers and partners and friends that we have worked together to really discern, truthfully and faithfully discern how we can see Jesus as a community in liturgy safely, rightly. So we are going to be having Easter services here live at St. Christopher's. We will be reopening going forward from that time. For the period of, for Easter Sunday in specific, we're gonna have four services because we have restrictions in terms of how many people can attend each one. So it will be different. We're gonna to have to wear masks. I know that's not the most fun or popular thing, but it does adhere to requirements of safety that we need to adhere to. But we will be here. We will gather around the Holy Sacrament. 
We're going to hear the beautiful organ as Christian helps us to see Jesus through our ears even. We'll have four services, 7 a.m. out in the courtyard, sunrise service, and then three here at 8, 10, and 12. It's a start. But it is so much like what God says right in the middle of this very sort of human discernment that Jesus goes through. Is, it, is that why I'm here? Yes, it is. God says, I glorified you then. I will glorify you again. I did it then. I'm going to do it again. We have faith in that. We've had wonderful times here with a, wonderful services over the years, decades in this place. We had a year hiatus. It was a form of death. But like the resurrection is, and it really means for us in our true essence of eternity, we see Jesus in that resurrection. We see Jesus in salvation and redemption. We're gonna be able to gather here together, celebrate that. That's a real resurrection for which I'm deeply grateful. Please join with me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you're following us with the prayer book, you can find the Apostles' Creed on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O oh Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O God, the King eternal, who dividest the day from the night and turnest the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, Incline our hearts to keep thy law and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done that, that thy will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, 
may bring those who do not know thee to the love, knowledge and love of thee for the honor of thy name. Amen. I ask you to let us know what your prayers and intercessions may be today. Feel free to put names in the chat line. We'll lift up prayers here together. Pray that people everywhere have the opportunity, mostly even through our efforts of working together to see Jesus, to see the love of Jesus in one another. We pray that people will be relieved of hardness of heart in order to do so, particularly as we approach Holy Week and Easter. Pray today for D, Pat, Virginia, Chris, Carl, Catherine, Caroline, David, Bobby, Stacy, Blair, Bob and Patty, Andy and his family, Sandy, Sonny, Jim, Libby, Jane, Lynn, Craig, Andy, Mary, Linda and Gus, Finley, Jim and Marilyn, Linda, George, Nick, Aunt Naomi, Tony, Janie, Anna, Nancy, Bud, Dave, Grant, Patty, Bill, John, Therese, Dennis, Dottie, Claire, Missy, Brian, Diane, Lisa, Joy, Jeff, Anna and Tom, Desi, Kathy, Mary, Jesse, Lee, Sandra, Fontaine, and Jeffrey, Jane, David, Katie, Jan, Tom, Mike. Pray for those who struggle with other illnesses unrelated to the coronavirus that make life even more difficult for them. We pray that they be given the grace of good health. We pray today for ongoing recovery for Jenny, who's had good reports on her cancer, for Julie, who continues to recover, and Nels. Pray for Michael, Sue, Joyce, Ken, Betsy, Ada, Mary, Jean, Jennifer, Kathy, Kwame, Kaya, and Khalees, Hazel, Richard, Ryan, Logan, Amy, and pray a special prayer today for Peyton who spent a matter of weeks now in the hospital with treatment for her CF. We pray for her continued courage and strength which she's shown mightily. We continue for God's grace and mercy in the healing hands of those who tend to her. We pray today for peaceful repose for Dick, Beth, Richard, Catherine, Robbie, Sutton, Rosemary, Andre, Joe Dan, Betsy, Cy, Remy, Marianne, Florence, Seal, Vaughn, Nancy, Leon, Ken, Bob, Sue, Anne, Kathy, Nance, Doreen, and Larry. And finally, I pray for you in thanksgiving for the patience and the unity that you have really participated in. Very proud of our faith family. We've really endured this in a, in a rather amazing way because of all of you. Very thankful for it. I'm thankful that our opportunity to reopen and thankful for us to all enter into a new season together as we all find ways to see Jesus. 
We'll close today with the words of the general thank thanksgiving, which you can find on page 58 of the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. With that, I bid you a blessed day, a blessed week. We look forward to celebrating Holy Week together. We look forward to having us gathering for Easter Sunday. Look for more information to come. There's a physical packet coming out as usual. For those who are not prepared to come uh, worship together uh, at this time, there will be everything necessary to continue to uh, participate via Zoom, but we will also have the protocols for how we get together and there will be more information coming through email and other means. The peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.